Hello, I'm Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and OnlineFirstAid.com and today I want to talk to you about stabbings, about first aid for stabbings, about um, how to stop a bleed with using um, a proper tourniquet or an improvised tourniquet. I'm also going to put it all in a context a bit because there have been a huge number of, of stabbings um, um, which resulted in quite a few um, fatalities and it's extremely sad. So the Minister for, the Minister for Crime, Victoria Atkins, um, is going to chair a serious violence task force this week to try and see how they can cut down on this national emergency. I mean, the latest statistics show a 93% rise in the number of people aged 16 and under being treated for assault by either a knife or by sharp objects over the last five years. I mean, that's huge, 93% rise. Um, there's a 77% rise in children um, linked to fatal stabbings over the last three years. Uh, and it's getting younger. So there's a lot of under 16s carrying knives now. Uh, and it's not all gang related. Anybody um, could find themselves in a situation where they are having to, to help someone who has been stabbed. Uh, one of my friends um, in a nice area around here, um, she very sadly um, had someone that sort of rang the doorbell and they'd been stabbed. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but they were seriously hurt and she had to administer first aid. Um, and another of my friends round, yes, I'm in London, but it's not a, just a London problem. Um, so another of my friends um, on her road, there was a fatality. So it is happening and it could happen anywhere in the country. London has the highest incidence, but second to that is Manchester and Yorkshire and kids carry knives throughout the country. So let's not kid ourselves, it's somebody else's problem. It's for all of us. So um, the statistics show that there's been a 20% rise in um, kids carrying knives in schools. That's 20% more. And further to that, um, it's been shown that if you're carrying a knife, you're three times more likely to be stabbed. And very often that's with your own knife. And I know of instances when that has happened. So it doesn't make you safer carrying a knife. It makes you more vulnerable. And a lot of kids don't understand that. So First Aid for Life work with schools a lot. Um, we work with youth workers and we go in with some pictures and we say guess what being stabbed hurts and if you're carrying a knife you're more likely to get stabbed and we explain to the kids what can happen we give them an idea of their own mortality and we give them the first aid skills to be able to help each other and help themselves if they are stabbed i mean we all remember damalola taylor um stabbed with a, a broken bottle um i mean if it had first aid skills, perhaps it might have been different. So um, it's really important that parents help, that school's involved and that everybody else is. And knowing first aid helps too. So the majority of stabbing victims um, die from their wounds, that's obvious. And a lot of the time they die from shock following their wounds and they could die slowly because very often they are not targeted, um, clear, precise um, wounds in a stabbing. They are you know, ad hoc. So it might be a slow, um, a slow bleeding, or it could be extremely fast and they could have a catastrophic bleed and bleed out in, in less than five minutes. So it's really important that people are aware of what sort of first aid to give and how to help and lives are saved and have been saved as a result of quick thinking and good first aid skills. So the key is to work out whether they are unconscious uh, or they're conscious. Well, before even that, make sure that you're safe. So if the perpetrator is still around, it may not be safe for you to help. They probably won't be, but if they are, make sure um, it is safe for you. Never be tempted to remove um, 
a knife or a sharp object from the wound because it will be stemming the bleeding um, and uh, removing it will make it worse. It's also damaged on the way in and it will damage on the way out and removing it will undoubtedly make things worse. So don't remove anything in the wound and apply direct pressure quickly. So the advice is to, uh, to apply firm direct pressure as quickly as you can. Lie the person down, elevate the legs and apply firm pressure. If something's in the wound, then you might need to make some sort of a donut ring to apply pressure um, through it, pressing like that, or put a couple of wrapped bandages or something else you've got, so a rolled up t-shirt or something either side and apply pressure over the top so you're not pushing um, the, the sharp object further into the wound. If it is a wound on arms or legs, so on the limbs, and direct pressure hasn't worked, then that's the situation where you might start thinking about a tourniquet. Now what a tourniquet does is it cuts off the blood supply to the rest of the limb and means that um, the bleeding will stop. Um, with a catastrophic bleed, you can bleed out in less than five minutes, uh, less than three. So it's really important that you have tried direct pressure first and that if you are, if you've decided that a tourniquet is what you need to do, that you make that commitment to do it, you apply the tourniquet tightly and you do not remove it. It will hurt the person a lot putting the tourniquet on. So once you have made that commitment, you mustn't undo it because any toxins that will have built up will then be released and flood into the body and it could, <clears throat> could prove fatal. So once you've made that commitment, the tourniquet needs to go on and it needs to go on as tightly as you can. So <clears throat> this is a proper tourniquet. So a combat type tourniquet as they would use um, in the military, although they don't use orange ones. Um, and what you do is you put it on, um, not over clothes, and you pull it tight. And then that is your windlass that you use to tighten and pull it really, really tight. And then you tuck that bit in once it's on. Um, there is a proper video um, of me demonstrating this and more information on our website on First Aid for Life. Um, but you tuck that in tightly when it's on. If you haven't got a proper tourniquet, and let's face it, most of us are not carrying these around just in case, then you need some firm material. So from an ordinary first aid kit, you have a calico triangular bandage and a pair of scissors. And that would be great for making a good quality tourniquet. You need to make sure that you're folding it into something that's about um, yeah, three centimeters or so um, wide and put it on, ideally on a single bone, that's the easiest, and about five centimeters above a joint. And you need to put it on and then you use the scissors as your windlass. So you tie it in a knot and then the, wind, the scissors will allow you to tighten it right up so that you have an extremely tight area. If it's not tight enough, it can actually increase the blood loss because of the way it acts on the venous, um, on the veins. So make sure it is on tight enough. And once you've made that commitment, you will not be removing that tourniquet um, until the person is in hospital. It is removed by a doctor in a hospital environment. Um, make sure you take a really good note of the time that that tourniquet is applied because it's important that it is timed when that went on and so that they know when they're, that when they're taking it off. If it is um, a gaping wound um, that is bleeding profusely on the torso or um, buttocks or wherever, so anywhere on the torso, um, on the main part of the body, then you obviously wouldn't be able to use a tourniquet. So you would pack that um, and in a, um, in a hospital environment, or if we've got our proper kit, you would have some sterile um, packing material. If not, 
then you would need to put your finger into the wound. Obviously you're wearing gloves if you've got them. Put your finger into the wound and find the source of the bleeding and then pack something as tightly as you can to stop that bleeding and then you apply pressure over the top once you've packed the wound and apply pressure. So in an ideal world, you would have your clear, um, properly sterile sealed um, cellox dressing, but otherwise you are improvising. So I hope that is helpful. There is many, there's much more information on our site, as I said before, about exactly how to use or how to pack a wound and how to um, put on a tourniquet. Um, please stay safe and please just try and stop young people carrying knives. That's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com.